noticed when I talked to self-described Tea Partiers or conservatives about Ron Paul, one of the most common responses I get is, I like Ron Paul except for foreign policy. They'll say, when I see Ron Paul talking about domestic policy, I'm there with him 100%. But when he goes off on his foreign policy rants, that's where he loses me. I definitely think these people are worth talking to so long as they're being polite and they're not name calling. Because I always try to remind myself that I didn't always hold these views. If you watched one of my earlier videos, you'll learn that I was actually a neoconservative back in middle school and high school. I finally woke up and saw the light, of course, but that should prove that everyone, even the most hardcore neocon, is capable of changing their views. Now, I may not be able to change somebody's views overnight on foreign policy, but I can at least plant some seeds. I can at least make them question, make them have to justify to themselves why they believe in what they believe. In order to do that, we have to frame our argument, we have to tailor our message to conservatives. So I've created in this video five talking points on why our interventionist foreign policy, our current foreign policy, is not conservative. War costs too much money. Conservatives and Tea Partiers like to say that Washington is spending too much money. They're out of control. Agreed, but we also have to look at the cost of war. The Iraq and Afghanistan war has cost taxpayers hundreds of billions of dollars. How can that be ignored? War has unintended consequences. Conservatives usually understand unintended consequences when it comes to domestic government policies such as the minimum wage. They understand that even though a government policy may have good intentions, it almost always has bad results. Well, the same applies to foreign policy. Our federal government, when they invade a country, that I don't know that much about to begin with, bad things happen. Things don't go as planned. Our federal government ends up killing a bunch of innocent civilians, a bunch of innocent family members. And if these people weren't already terrorists to begin with, they're motivated to become a terrorist because they want to seek revenge. They just saw their family member get killed by a bomb what would you do? War is not pro-life. Most conservatives claim to be pro-life and they say that all life is sacred. Well, that shouldn't just apply to fetuses then. How can a pro-life person justify the death of thousands of U.S. troops and likely hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians in recent war? War is anti-family. Most traditional conservatives will tell you that children are best off when they have a mother and a father in the household raising them. But the entire family suffers when a family member is shipped off overseas to fight in a war. And they suffer even more if that family member is injured or killed. If you really support the troops and are pro-family, you'll want our servicemen and women at home safe with their family. Politicians are liars. Many conservatives and Tea Partiers will say they don't trust government or politicians, but they somehow change their tune when it comes to foreign policy, which doesn't make much sense because politicians do not transform into angels when it comes to foreign policy. They're still corrupt. Politicians will lie about everything and anything, including, definitely, the reasons they go to war.